Thank you. I am uh, delighted to uh, welcome Katia Batista. Um, she is going to be presenting a paper on migration, political institutions, and social networks in Mozambique. And this is a joint work with uh, Julia Scyther and uh, Pedro Vicente. So thank you for being here. and. Uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity and for being here, all of you. So I'll be telling you about this work uh, where, well, I think it's the only paper on migration, but I think we can kind of uh, see this. I mean, you'll, you'll see clearly how the role of information as a mechanism to for change in institutional setting will come about. So hopefully we'll be able to get to that. So what I'll do here is I'll try to spare you a lot of details that we can talk about then for the finish. And I'll just focus on the main points so that we can have some discussion here. We are still working on it. We have results, but we want to, we are still thinking of how to interpret them, so it would be really nice to have this discussion. So let me start with a brief uh, introduction, uh, saying that well, migration in this world has developed enormously in the past decades. So the world's attention is on it. So this is a kind of important phenomenon, I hope you agree. Then recently, or in the last decade as well, we have seen literature developing on the role of migration for the origin Okay, So not so much in the debate on immigration in host countries, what's the impact on nations, etc. But this, this idea that some, maybe migration in some sense is, is, is capable of promoting economic development uh, in the areas of origin for the So this kind of literature that has been developing, um, and I mean, I'm just saying, just talking about a few items such as human capital situation, entrepreneurship, the role of the assets for FBI, international trade, all of these literature have been developed. Uh, but we see that there are relatively few studies on the impact that migration has as a, a, a changer of institutions and um, potentially uh, the role that it has for improving the quality of institutions. So that will be exactly our focus here. So really, I said it was really short and focused. So the broad question that we have here then will be about the impact that migration can have on political participation in the country of origin of migrants. More specifically, what we'll be looking at is what are the specific channels through which migration might affect um, the political participation of the country. And so. Our contribution here will be to use detailed data on social networks and, um, and try to explore these different channels through which migration can affect the quality of improving institutions in the home country. Specifically, we'll have networks based on geographical proximity, we'll have networks based on kinship and regulation. So these three types of networks are the ones that we are going to examine in this paper. Then we will be using three different outcome measures uh, as proxies for this change in the institutional environment. And so we'll be taking well, just basic, very simple self reports on voting. Then we'll have, so here we just choose to use one, but we'll have more, and I can talk about that. Uh, we just chose to use these proxies for um, uh, actual voting behavior in which. We, can, we, we ask the self-reported, the people self-reported to be voting about the fingers that they had been inked, that had been inked uh, when they voted. And so this is like just to, just to test the quality of these um, survey self-reports. And we will say some more things about this out at this point. And then finally, we'll have this behavioral measure of political participation in which people are invited to send an SMS message to the president with their political priorities. And again, I'll tell exactly on how it will be doing, how this can be made something credible uh, about political participation. Review of results has that, uh, well, we, we find that political participation seems to be learned from migrant peers in a variety of ways. Okay? So all of these three types of networks that we examine have uh, some role towards this end. Now, kinship and sharing with migrants um, is most strongly, seems to be most strongly affecting uh, political participation, especially after accounting for self relations with migrants. Now, chatting, uh, talking to migrants, it looks particularly powerful. And what we argue here is that it seems to be enlarging information sets, uh, but also promoting a change in behavior. So, here, 
uh, we'll be thinking about intrinsic motivation for political participation. And okay, we'll argue it's not uh, it's not definite by any means, but we'll argue that the evidence is like this is subjective of this type of mechanism, and it, this is something that we'd like to address in further research. Uh, finally, just because this is something that we also have been working on in separate papers, uh, but we find here that this um, controlling for um, endogeneity of migration, so for this idea that migrants are not picked at random from the population, uh, we find evidence as self negative self selection, okay, in terms of proclivity for political participation. And this is something that is um, in line with our other work on self selection of migrants in this context for the big same, same data set. And indeed, um, it is kind of reassuring because in that other paper we have several estimation techniques, different sources of variation, and this is obvious. So this is something that um, we think it's, it's, it's good for us in terms of believing what we find. Even though I won't be showing you all of those details. I don't know if we have some time, I'll try to be brief, but this is our outline. Uh, I'll basically skip over related literature, and uh, I'll spend some time talking about our theoretical framework. So if you think about what could be happening here, and then I'll tell you about the, the results we have and discuss them a bit. So on migration political behavior, as I told you, there is not that wide a literature, uh, but it goes in the direction of showing that uh, there seems to be uh, at least some positive <laughs> impact of out-migration in the quality distribution of the well. On um, diffusion of political behavior through networks, we also have several contributions that have shown how um, kinship networks, or kinship networks, but also uh, other types of networks have work or do work to spread uh, the um, um, political behavior. So let me focus now on the our theoretical question. We have tried to advance, so we only have one slide, and it's all I'm happy to take questions if you do. So what we have here is a very, very basic model. It's cost-benefit analysis. And uh, so this is about the expected utility that a potential so let's, let's talk about voting, let's keep it there, we we'll have to do that. Let's think about it for now. So let's think about potential uh, voter that takes the expected utility from voting and faces some cost. Okay? And the cost is not necessarily near, it can be tied, it can be cost of searching for information uh, to um, to uh, engage in this decision. Now, within these two function, what we have? Well, we have this function G here that tells about the outcome of the political process. That is the result of the action of the self, okay, so J and others. Right? So that's how it's here. And what we did here, because this is the uh, Akalaka Grantee framework, thinking about identity as a uh, uh, determinant of intrinsic motivation. Here we are thinking about intrinsic motivation as one of the potential determinants of your decision to vote, in this example. And so what we have here is, what we have here is this certain action, whether we are according or not, to P. And P is the function that describes this cloud action for your social behavior. What you are supposed to be doing. Are people expecting to vote or not? Well, this is what this function P here is telling you. And how do we find it? Well, your social category, CJ, depends on your own characteristics. And here, one of them will be migration, one of them will be your geographical location. But what we'll think about is that when you decide to move from one country to the other, it might change a whole lot of things. And then if you're self assigning the social category, that can imply the equity spread right? So it's what we have here, and then X minus J here highlights the role that the action of others have in shaping this um, in shaping this prescribed behavior. What do I mean by this? Well, suppose that you are a migrant, you arrive in a new country, you see that people are much more likely to vote. This might shape your prescribed behavior, right? And so this is this will happen directly to the migrant, but what we argue here is that this is also the mechanism through which we see this happening a bit in networks. Okay, let me give you an example again so you can see that what I mean. And so what's the idea here is that if you, I mean, you are still back home, but you have this family member who's ready to talk to, who's abroad, and you see that um, the, the 
behavior is changing. This my outer effect what you eat. Right? And so this is the way in which you might have this kind of effect happening here and through Netflix. And in the same way, we have here that all of these, you know, these expectations here, is a function of this information set. Right? The information set itself might be affected by your information you get through your network. So then what we the proposition we take here from, from the depth and from this framework that we try to test are well first of all, so we, what are the mechanisms through which migration can affect the That's how we realize what 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 we start. So in terms of intrinsic motivation, the story is such that uh, as I just said, migration changes the social category that you self assign to. Um, and this brings new prescribed political participation for migrants. So this would be the direct effect of migration on political participation. Then it might happen that this change of the participation of migrants modifies itself prescribed behavior in the home. Right? So this would be a direct effect in Netflix that we want to understand. The second possible mechanism is the information from that more directly, in which, well, we know that migration may entail learning about political processes, about their value, and so this is information that can be passed on to networks and this way affect the decision for political participation. So that's our framework, this is what we want to get. The context, the country context is Mozambique, right? so here, so this um, very good country, uh, it's going for a 185 out of 187. Right, to illustrate, this is a country that suffered a tremendous and long period of war, okay, first independence and then terrible civil war uh, that only ended uh, in 1992. And, well, even recently, sometimes we see this as a much smaller outburst of violence. Okay. This is a country that traditionally has had large migration flows into neighboring South Africa. So this is something that is uh, really well established. The political strategy is very simple. It's well, just much out of the framework. We want to spend much time here. Of course, what you might have in mind is yes, migration is a logic. That's why it's not an experiment. It's an experiment in real people, actually. That's why I feel more calm. It's not in real people. And so what we do here is try to simply have a rough control using experiments by our group of special experts. As I said, so we have different paper using the same data in which we test other estimation strategies, other estimation techniques, and the results point to the same sort of, the same pattern of self-selection, and so I won't reveal it too much about it. Um, yeah, the data we use is about natural catastrophes, okay, the UN Disident Entire Database, and we also have this data on uh, this full network data that will allow us to construct these networks in the migration experience. Uh, yeah, the only thing that is a bit non standard is the way we have implemented the experiments that we've done with uh, the efforts, right? So we, have, we are instrumenting here migration and exposure to drop, but we have to construct these networks so that we can implement these exposure to drop. Okay, data collection was done around 2009 elections in both data pre and post elections. Uh, we use two-stage cluster representative sampling on province situation areas. The provinces we have are up north. This is typical that I've worked for. I worked in Mozambique, so it's up north, Cabo Delgado, Longueza, and then the south, Grande, and South East Province. So we have 161 villages, and um, interviewers were timed in the House of Heather's house, and they were the eligibility required that they have access to the zone. Okay, this was not a strong a strong restriction. Okay, most important, our the outcome measure of the decision. So we have well, just self-reported voter turnout, and then this proxy, our underlying proxy to ask the voters where we ask people that were self-reported to vote, what was the correct finger, or the, what was the finger that was in the vote. Okay. And so this full claim is suggestive of information for that. Fact that someone knows, but you like to get different, so you have not voted. 
that will show the CDC is that turn up in this election was 40%, and we have 91% of people claiming we know, and when you it, it, it goes down a bit, and it's still, it's still much more than what we know in the world. And so we claim here that being able to show the Brexit link um, uh, correctly in the finger is the evidence of some information in the world. Yet we still see that the uh, money that we have split with the country more than just the first country. Thirdly, most original, I would say, we have the behavioral measures in the system. So, as I said, it wasn't important that we have time to describe it fully, but what we did here was On policy suggestions for the Brexit, and the Brexit was just starting with the with this matter. So, how, how is this credible? Right? So, uh, we had um, we had uh, this uh, part of the newspaper that uh, public I mean, that was publishing support for the issue. So I will claim that this measure here is suggestive of intrinsic motivation to participate politically. Right? We cannot. I should underline, we cannot exclude, and this is a discussion that I want to have with us here, this is what we have, where we have our mind at the moment, we cannot exclude that there is not information going on here, right? Because if you want to be able to prescribe the policy prescription, there is a disinformation on these specific uh, measures. But, yeah, so let's leave it at this here so that I can show you a result. Okay, so this is the way we construct the network. I'm skipping these. Summary statistics, migration is very prevalent in this country. Um, okay, these are the summary statistics. So, being female in effect is 85%, self report minus one, 76%, 82 Results. So, this first method, this first method here, geographical method, is about um, what we see here is that we have this significant impact only after. And then the market will agree with you that that's about 20 to 20. So we need to wait. measure, no results whatsoever for uh, the IFP, but then the same uh, kind of strong response. How do we interpret it? Like, uh, uh, all right, so what we, the way we interpret this here is an evidence that there is strong learning by individuals geographically connected to markets. <coughs> same as summary response to this uh, correction with the, uh, for showing the correct view. Okay, so these people know more about it and their connection to my work seems to be very significant as we can see uh, here. Then, uh, in terms of behavioral, the same thing. So after accounting for selection, which is undoubtedly very important in this process, uh, we have that. Well, it seems to be those randomly forced migrants, so those that were randomly forced to leave because of job happiness, uh, that are particularly um, increasing their intrinsic motivation when they have found okay, And then I want to be discussing the, ne the negative self selection of migrants in the interest of time. Let me show you the other results. Kinship. And kinship here we see that the results are uh, overall stronger. Okay, we have results even before going Selection, the magnitudes are also higher, so it seems that having a migrant in a family seems to be uh, like, uh, something that provides the information. So, when you compare these, these two lines, you see that the effect is stronger on the corrective measure, so this means that um, there is information coming into the kinship method. And behavioral measure, well, here it doesn't seem to work so well. Right? So, uh, this is evidence that kinship methods both are not relevant to the context where we see information flowing in the market. Um, let me get to these results on chatting. Right? Chatting is uh, the kind of migration network where we see the strongest right? Talking to migrants seems to be about important. We see that this is the case not only for those that self report voting. But also for those that have more information about voting, okay, the results are much stronger or rather well, significantly increasing and stronger. And in terms of behavioral measure, here you can get, well, it's not significant significant decisions, but you can get some significant results. 
So again, we, we interpret these as strong learnings uh, from chat and Myra here. Uh, we see here evidence that supports the increasing motivation in kids due to migrant checking. Although we cannot exclude that there are no information uh, that is ready. Obviously, checking should accompany information that is not only about the process of voting, but we also about the policy priorities. Uh, and again, evidence of negative migrant self selection. So, summary. Political participation seems to be learned from my theory to a certain extent in a variety of ways, right? And this can be geographic proximity, kinship, and sharing. Now, kinship and sharing with migrants uh, seems to be strongly increasing political participation, especially after thousands of negative self Chatting is seen especially powerful in the sense that it changes both outcomes that are more related to information fatigue, with information about the political process of the voting process, but also uh, in changing social prescriptions and thereby improving the intrinsic motivation for political Finally, we have this uh, evidence of negative self-selection of migrants, and we achieve this in uh, using all types of network analysis. So in terms of further research, what we are thinking about here is that we want to learn more. We want to learn more about the cells through which migrant networks affect political participation. And so um, we want to know the answer to questions such as what are the specific information set changes that are affecting political processes and uh, political priorities. And we also want to know what are the migrant characteristics or actions that prompt changes in prescribed behavior? What are these actions of migrants that change the norm and that is more difficult to be politically motivated? And I'll discuss more now. Here's the question.